My name is Steve Block, and I'm a professor here at Stanford University. I work in two different departments, the Department of Biology and the Department of Applied Physics. My work is astride of the borders between physics and biology, and I'm interested in problems that a biologist would be interested in, namely uh, how, how life works, how do things move, how do they reproduce, how does genetic information work, how are genes regulated. But the, and the tools I use, however, are the tools brought from physics. These include, of course, microscopes, lasers, light, photonics. Um, it's become possible in the last 10 years to do experiments that were only pipe dreams uh, over only a decade or two ago. And this new area of biology is known as single molecule biophysics. In this area, the challenge is to study the molecules of life, the proteins, the nucleic acids, the carbohydrates, the chemicals that make us up, but study these things literally one molecule at a time. Uh, this, of course, is not very easy to do. The molecules are much too small to be seen by, say, conventional microscope. But it, nonetheless, they can be man manipulated and they can be measured. And the techniques that are involved in doing this often involve things like lasers. The technology that my lab has helped to pioneer is known as optical tweezers, or the optical trap. Using an invisible beam of infrared ra radiation coming from a laser, you can use the force of radiation pressure to capture and manipulate small materials, including individual proteins and nucleic acids. What we do in some of our experiments is hook tiny microscopic beads up to molecules like DNA. And then we can use the optical trap to trap these beads and exert very tiny controlled forces on the DNA molecules. We can al also look at enzymes that move on DNA, like the enzyme that reads the genetic code, which has the name RNA polymerase, and study its motion. So we've done that here at Stanford. And the, the, to do this requires microscopes, requires lasers, requires physics, re really re requires the background of a physicist. But the problems are very different from the ones that physicist usually encounters. We're interested in how these molecules work and how they make life work. From my perspective, one of the real advantages of being at Stanford and being associated with SPRC is the, the kind of connections that it brings me scientifically um, in order to carry out my own research. We all love to be inspired, and uh, one of the advantages of being at a great university like Stanford, of course, is that you have only to look around you to find any number of people who are involved and very active in their science. So there's a sense of ferment and excitement that just comes from being in an extraordinary university. There's also an opportunity to get truly great students. But being at something like SPRC gives you something of an added bonus above and beyond all that. It gives you an opportunity to interact in a very specific way with faculty who have some of the most intimate and up-to-date knowledge of how, for example, lasers and laser-related materials and photonic materials work. And so since we use lasers in our work, we're always interested in what's the latest and greatest laser. The lasers that we use have to have some very extraordinary properties. They're not like the laser you have in a, in a laser pointer or the laser that's found in your CD player or even the laser that's used on the corner for engraving. The lasers we use have to be able to hold their position to a tiny, tiny fraction of a distance. Um, uh, it's hard to put it in perspective. The distances we're talking about are below nanometers, below the, below the size that nanotechnologists are worried about, all the way down to the level of an angstrom. To put that in perspective, the angstrom is the diameter of a hydrogen atom. We need to be able to hold a laser beam stable in space to within the diameter of a hydrogen atom and do so for a few seconds at a time to make the kind of measurements we do. We've been able, for example, to see a molecule like RNA polymerase move literally along the DNA ladder one base pair at a time. So as you all know, the DNA uh, is a double helix, and from base to base, each of those bases is separated by three and a half angstroms. We can literally watch an enzyme go chickity, chickity, chickity as it climbs this ladder. But to do that, we need to shine light on it, scatter light from a laser, use these optical traps, measure forces, and measure displacements that are good down to an angstrom. This requires a laboratory that's in a basement, and it has to be temperature controlled, vibration isolated, mechanically isolated, um, uh, we, acoustically isolated so that we don't have too much in the way of sounds, which cause the apparatus to vibrate. And so we're constantly looking to our lasers to have better and improved properties. They need to be powerful. Um, they need to be, have good what's called pointing stability. They need to be extraordinarily stable in, in, uh, in terms of their, the light they produce. And one of the advantages of SPRC is I can go down the hall and talk to colleagues and learn about the latest developments in lasers. Some of the new generation of diode lasers 
are now coming to the point where they can be used for this kind of technology. And some of these haven't made it out of the laboratory yet. So again, associations with people who are really expert in this field allows us um, a first, first uh, look, so to speak, at some of the new technologies that are just coming on board. And that's a particular advantage. So it's great to be at a great university, it's great to have great students, and it's even greater to have great colleagues. And if you have all of those, uh, it's hard to go wrong, really.